All right, I have a great commentator to go through what the heck happened last night with Joe Biden and the State of the Union. Grant Stinchfield, thank you so much for coming on today. Yeah, no problem, Steve. It's great to be with you again. Always a pleasure coming on your program. So, uh, you know, Biden's 30 minutes late to his own event. He then walks in like he's the king. They're patting him on the back, uh, telling him how great he is. He finally gets started. And the first thing he does is he compares himself to Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the great wartime president. He then says Vladimir Putin is Adolf Hitler and that Donald Trump is willing to hand over the world and Europe yeah. to Hitler. Uh, did, did you pick up on that? Did you see what he was subtly doing to demonize Donald Trump while making himself look like a hero. Yeah, I don't even think that it was subtle. Uh, I think he he literally started out his State of the Union address, which should be about how was America doing, and he started it out with Ukraine. And, and as you mentioned, his wacky comparisons. So he starts with Ukraine, then he complains about Republicans, and he's complaining about Donald Trump. For 10 minutes, we don't get anything about the State of the Union. We, we got about the war in Ukraine and why we need to send money there. It took him, I don't know how long before he even got to the border, which is the biggest problem that we face. And, and I think my, my major takeaway from the whole night is what was he yelling and screaming about? The man was like angry, screaming, yelling the entire time. I was like, was he mad he got chocolate pudding in, in the White House home for the elderly this morning rather than his normal vanilla pudding? Like what set him off? I have no idea. Yeah, he did. He came across as angry. My son asked me, um, did did he seem more energized? I said, yeah, it reminded me of uh, when they uh, pumped Hitler full of cocaine and methamphetamine, and then they sat him down in front of Mussolini, and he just screamed for six hours until finally Italy was like, okay, fine, we'll go to war with Germany, right? Like, he was amped up. He was definitely on something. His cognitive ability was better than normal, not great, but better than normal. But man, he was just like pumped full of testosterone or something. So I think it was Adderall. I really do. Because his his voice patterns were just, he was rolling through. And I've never seen him speak as fast as he did. This is typically common of somebody that's on speed. And let's face it, that's all Adderall is. It's straight speed that your doctor prescribes to you. So you you had you had that from him. Two, two big moments that I think was the worst of the State of the Union. The first was arresting the Gold Star father, Steve McCoy, whose son, Kareem, died in Afghanistan, the botched withdrawal. You, you shouldn't disrupt the State of the Union, but once he's pulled out, give him a bottle of water and say, hey, brother, I know you, you got to calm down. I can't let you back in. Maybe call, have somebody with the Capitol Police call Joe Biden's confidants or senior advisors and say, hey, he wants you to come into the Oval Office tomorrow. You don't arrest the man. He lost his son for crying out loud. He was clearly angry and uh, he didn't deserve to be arrested. That tells you what Joe Biden's America is all about. He despises the military. He has no respect for Gold Star families. Really a disgrace. And then botching Lake and Riley's name, this Georgia student, 22 years old, nursing student, killed by an illegal alien who was arrested too many times to count, never should have been in the position to murder her. Lincoln Riley. Lincoln he comes through with and uh that to me was just really really bad well sadly Lincoln Riley is trending on Twitter this morning um it, you know they can't yeah. even it, it's not even her name that's trending it's like this this poor you know deceased girl can't even get any respect and then he turned the tables and said you know she's basically dead because of Republicans in Congress I I just yeah. thought it was such a such a slap in the face. Well, there was no compassion there at all. And, and you know, Lincoln Riley, for sports fans, he's the head coach of, of USC football. So uh, I, I know Biden's a big sports fan, but is he was he conflating Lincoln Riley, the head coach, 40-year-old man making $10 million a year for Lincoln Riley, a nursing student? I mean, I don't know. It was really bad, though. And so then he goes on to say, first I thought it was he said – Thousands of illegals kill every year, but he did. And I played it over and over again. It's how many thousands are killed by legals, he says, as if to make the comparison somehow that, well, 
you know, legal people here legally kill people too. American citizens kill people. What does one have to do with the other? If anything, if you're here illegally, there was no reason for you to be in position to kill somebody. One, you should have gotten into the country. Two, after you're arrested numerous times, you should have been in jail or on your way back to your home country. But he makes these wild comparisons. It tells me no compassion whatsoever. And then has the gall to say, I've lost children too. I know where you're coming from. This guy is just, uh, you know, he's a disgrace, really. He, he's an angry old man that has no business being in the Oval Office. And I think he's the greatest national security risk we face. Yeah, it kind of reminded me, uh, remember when borders are, uh, Kamala Harris was asked, ha have you been to the border? Like, it's your one duty. It's the, it's the super duty that's been put on your priority list. Have you been to the border? And she's like, well, no, but I haven't been to Europe either, right? It's like, well... <laughs> Yeah, an illegal killed this beautiful, innocent college age girl, but legal people kill people too. It was right. like it was such a it was such a shifting the the blame over to somebody else instead of just saying, "Listen, I hate that someone who snuck into the country did this to yeah. one of our people. We're going to shut this down." There was none of that. You know, if you want to take a positive away from this speech last night, I think he solidified with his base that his goal was to go out there and show his base that he still is full full of vigor and energy and he can run again and for the next 4 years and I think they take his anger and his fire and his and his you know just wildness and they say okay he can run another 4 years that's a good thing that's a good thing for president trump it's a good thing for all of us i think he's the easiest one to beat of anybody but they don't really have a very deep bench the other part of this is that if he was going to try to take moderates, independents, left-leaning individuals, I think they're going to come away from that speech saying, that guy's an angry guy. He does not instill any confidence for me. There's not a steady hand at the helm that, that he is not hopeful about America. He's just angry. And anger is the ugliest emotion. You don't really ever want to make anger your full emotion the whole time. You can have bits of anger sprinkled in. But when you make your entire speech angry, it's a very ugly emotion. It turns most people off. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, I mean, maybe they injected him with piss and vinegar because he did. He just came across as, as very angry. But yeah. um, the other thing that I noticed was about 16 to 17% of his speech uh, right up front was dedicated to how bad Republicans are, specifically MAGA. Trump liking Republicans that they are they are the bigger threat like like we're the bigger threat compared to illegal immigrants uh, uh, committing crimes. I found that to be incredibly insulting from the guy who claimed he would be the the president for everybody and the great unifier. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, this is what he does. He has nothing to run on. So he's going to insult MAGA Republicans and President Trump because he has nothing else. I mean, when he talks about his greatest lies came when he was talking about the economy. And yeah, he says wages are up, but do you know the average household spends $11,000 more a year than they did under President Trump? Wages have not kept up with that. He, he loves to tout the stock market too. And I will give you, the stock market has been fabulous. My, my, my portfolio is doing great. But do you know only 37% of Americans have a 401k? So now you've got two thirds of America that don't have a 401k. They're not looking at the stock market. They're, they're, they're looking at, at a gallon of milk is costing them double what it was the last time around. Their rent is $200 more a month than it was under President Trump. Gas is twice a, a, of what it was. They're spending 28% more on groceries than they were. People are getting hammered, which is why his approval rating is the lowest it's ever been. And yet he wants to bring out all these things that the economy is doing so great. He's completely out of touch with Americans. Well, the, uh, just on that, you reminded me, um, the, the, the top 1% own 50% of the stock market and, and the top 10% of Americans own almost 90%. So what he really said is I've made the rich richer Yeah. and everybody else that doesn't have money in the stock market. You guys are all fighting for the leftover scraps. And by the way, those leftovers have become more and more expensive. So I thought it was incredibly insulting to say that he was going to grow the middle class, um, that he's the reason everybody is safer, that he's the reason everybody has more money. 
And yet you talk to the average American and they're struggling. Yeah. The cost of everything went up in like a six to 12 month period. And he's ignoring that because the rich have, you know, higher 401ks. And, and then I think he dispatches his athletes and his and his entertainers and his actors to somehow come to his defense. Those people are totally out of touch. Um, just to quote him here, I pulled some quotes from him. My economic plan is working. It's reducing the deficit. Um, Joe Biden is literally spending money at a reckless level. Uh, the deficit now is 34.2 trillion, excuse me, the debt when he took office was 27.8 trillion. Now it's 34 trillion. And uh, they expect a two trillion plus deficit will soon be the norm. That's not reducing the deficit. That's increasing the deficit. Yet he literally says he's reducing it. Um, here's another quote from him. We're going. We're growing an economy from the middle out and bottom up instead of the top down. Bidenomics is just another way of saying the American dream. We face a debt bomb right now. There are record credit card debts. Sixty-eight hundred dollars in credit card debt is what the average American faces. That is an outrageous number. Uh, inflation is through the roof. Roof. Mortgage rates are now at seven percent, and Overall debt among Americans is at $17 trillion. So growing the economy from, what did he say? From the middle out and the bottom up is not what's happening. The middle out and the bottom up are going into deep, 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 deep debt, Stephen. Yeah, they are. I, I see it every day. Everybody I talk to is like, man, have, have you noticed the price of this went up? Have you noticed the price of that went up? Oh, man, I'll never sell this house. I'll never get a better interest rate, you know? So there, there is a lot of economic uncertainty uh, among the, the, the middle class. Uh, I can't even imagine what it's like to be a lower income family right now trying to survive with how expensive everything has become. Um, what, what were your thoughts on him ordering the U.S. military to go uh, fight on behalf of uh, Israel in the sense of they're going to now supply H Hamas people, Palestine, this uh, pier that goes out into the Mediterranean. I I, I am all for humanitarian uh, stuff. I, I it, it breaks my heart, this situation, but does this put our military people in danger? And if he could sign an emergency order in one day to protect the borders of Gaza, why can't he do an emergency order in one day to protect the borders of Texas? Uh, well, it's great points. I mean, he's more concerned about other countries' borders than he is ours. That's that's clear. I think you're putting members of our military in harm's way to go go uh, build this pier that he wants to build. Um, you say you feel sorry for the people of Gaza. I will tell you, Stephen, I don't have a lot of love loss for the people of Gaza. The people of Gaza elected Hamas into power. Uh, Palestinian army there. Who who's going to run this two state solution? So. This is what Biden was basically saying yesterday or leading us into believe that he, he, he wants a two-state solution to this. Well, who's going to lead the second state? Uh, the Islamic Jihad? Who, uh, is it going to be Hamas? Because this is who the people of Gaza elect into power. That means the second state instantly becomes a state sponsor of terror. They are not going to become a non-member ally of NATO. They're going to become enemies of the world the moment the state is created. So, Who's going to run the second state, Joe Biden? And you're dropping all this humanitarian aid in. It's not getting to the people Hamas is taking. it. You're basically resupplying Hamas terrorists that were put in power by the people of, of Gaza. So I, I, quite frankly, I don't have any love loss. If the people of Gaza want to stop all this, rise up and say enough is enough to Hamas and say get out of our schools, get out of our, our, our hospitals, stop using us as human shields, and end it all. But they don't do that. Stephen, they embrace these people. Do you know why? Because the people of Gaza hate the Western world. They hate the Jews. They hate the Christians. They hate anyone that doesn't believe in the things that they believe in. And so in the end, they support this from, from, uh, from, from uh, the river to the sea. That's wiping out Israel is what that is. And that's not just Hamas. That's the people of Gaza as well. Yeah. And, and, but what about... Um... 
so he can sign this emergency order to defend their border. Why can't he sign an emergency order over and over again? He blamed Republicans saying Republicans are the reason that we're being overrun. Republicans are the yeah. reason it's taking us so long to kick illegals out. The Republicans are the reason for the migrant crime increase. Uh, is this is this just a campaign speech where he blames the the opposite party for everything? Well, look, I, I think this is all part of his his grand scheme. He didn't think he'd get caught as bad as he's gotten caught now with these open borders. He doesn't want to reinstate Trump era policies. He does, we don't need a bill to do it. He could do it instantly with remain in Mexico, go back to building, uh, building the wall, put a pause on asylum claims. All of these things would instantly stop the flow of people, get Mexico on board and say, hey, you know what? We're going to wage war on the cartels. We'll, if we're going to use our United States military for anything, let's send special forces into Mexico and take out the leaders of the cartels. I'm all for that. They're killing American citizens at, at a at a record number with fentanyl, drugs, sex trafficking, and these things. He's not going to do any of these things. And he could, but he's not because he wants the open borders. They are padding congressional districts with illegals because the illegals are counted when you run the numbers for, for the population for each congressional district. This, by some accounts, gives Congress 20 extra Democrats a year by the number of illegals that are in this country now. Yeah, I had uh, investigative journalist Laura Logan on yesterday, That's and she, great. she, yeah, she said the same thing because I had said to her, "Is this about getting future Democrat voters?" And she said, "It's actually about counting bodies mm -hmm. uh, in an area so that they can get more representatives in Washington D.C." Once they have more representatives in Washington, D.C., that's how they control the country. So turning Texas purple, turning Arizona purple, uh, getting more and more seats. You know, they've lost that seat in California. If they can pick up one in Arizona, one in Texas, one in some other state, then yep. boom, all of a sudden they have the majority in the House and Republicans are getting nothing done uh, as a minority group. Well, I promise you that is exactly what it is all about. And this is about power, their power, and the fundamental change of, of America. It's also about destroying suburbs. They hate suburbs, so they want everyone to be an inner city. And the more that they fly these illegals around the country, notice they're spreading them out. They're turning suburbs into cities. This is, this is their ultimate goal, to wipe out the suburban middle class that typically votes Republican. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, final question. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, how about Biden not once saying Trump's name as if he was Voldemort, the name we shall not name? I didn't even notice that. Oh, uh, he called yeah. him predecessor about 20 times. He never once said Trump or Donald Trump. Yeah, you know, I saw, I, I think it was 13 times he mentioned his predecessor, but you're right. He, I guess he never did say Trump once. Um, I don't know. The truth is that's a move that I would have tried to write into the speech. If I was writing a speech for President Trump, don't name Biden. Um you know, maybe that's a, it's an interesting political move. I, I, I don't know. I'll give him credit where credit is due. That's funny that he didn't mention his name. Yeah. It, to me, it seemed like a crybaby Nancy Pelosi move. Oh yeah. Uh, we won't, we won't name him. Remember uh, during the COVID era, she would not say his name because she, she just couldn't bring herself to say it. Yeah. You know, I, the only reason why I give him credit is I had, uh, I had told the president's team a while back that he needs to stop even mentioning Nikki Haley after his wins in these primary states. Don't even mention her. And, uh, and he didn't, I, I don't know if that had anything to do with me or not, but uh, if you watch from South Carolina on, he doesn't even, he wasn't even mentioning Nikki Haley. So, you know, it's a political move, a political play, but I didn't even notice it until you pointed it out. So kind of funny. <laughs> Maybe, maybe they thought uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene would pull a Will Smith and just go up there and slap him. Get, yeah. Don't put my president's name in your mouth. Uh, well, uh, Grant, I appreciate you coming on. Where can I point people towards if they want to follow you and stay connected? Yeah. Well, uh, the, the best way is just my website, grantstinchfield.com. and has links to all my social media, The Real America's Voice Show, every, every night at uh, 7 p.m., Monday through Friday. But uh, grantstinchfield.com, and then on social media, Stinchfield 1776 everywhere. You know what the one that I'd like to push though? I got totally banned from TikTok. They wiped out my account. I was using a burner phone. So I started a new account, not Grant Stinchfield. That's a little bit of a troll for them. Not Grant Stinchfield. Um, 
lo and behold, they reinstituted my old TikTok account yesterday. I had been screaming and yelling about it on all these platforms. I don't know if that had anything to do with it or not. But anyway, not Grant Stinchfield on TikTok. If you want to give me a follow there, I just want to be a thorn in their side. Oh, yeah, let, let's do it. All right, folks, if you like this content, these incredible guests, hit that like button and that subscribe button. Grant Stinchfield, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Uh, Steve, thank you so much, buddy.